Welcome back. Super excited. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about the TOGAF architecture development method cycle. In other words, this is the core process that enterprise organization can use. So what is the TOGAF ADM all about? The ADM is applied to develop an enterprise architecture, which will meet the business and IT needs of an organization. That's really what the TOGAF architecture development method in a nutshell. The TOGAF ADM is the result of continuous collaboration and contributions from a large number of architecture practitioners, mainly serving the two key processes. First, it describes a method for developing and managing the life cycle of an enterprise architecture and forms the core of TOGAF. Second, it may be tailored to the organization's needs and is then employed to manage the execution of architecture planning activity. So that's really fairly straightforward, the concept of TOGAF ADM. The question remains, why TOGAF? Well, the IT architecture needs to be closely reflected towards the business goals of the enterprise organization. So specific techniques such as business scenarios, business processes should be used to ensure that the business goals are properly understood by the IT architect, right? So think of this as an amalgamation of the business versus IT. And then this amalgamation is reflected in the IT architecture developed using TOGAF. The main reasons that we should adopt TOGAF, ADM, for architecture development are, could be, let's say, it provides a comprehensive method widely adopted in the market. It's customizable to meet the organization industry needs, avoids maybe reinventing the wheel, provides a guidance to ensure business and IT alignment, and it's also based on best practices, right? So all of these are basically advantages of implementing TOGAF. In addition, it also provides the models of the future state. So we can evaluate the current state of the organization as well as where the organization is heading towards but provides a comprehensive framework of the future state of the organization and what it should look like across all the enterprise architecture viewpoints so briefly before i get into the actual adm cycle let's take a look at the key points the adm like i mentioned earlier is basically iterative over the whole process between phases and within phases so for instance you will have an input and then you'll have an output, right? And in the middle, it'll be a process. That's the iteration. So for each iteration of the ADM, a new decision must be taken. And what does this new decision entail? It's really covering the breadth of the enterprise to be defined. In other words, the future state of the organization, the level of detail that needs to go in, the extent of time period aimed at, including the number of and the extent of any intermediate time period. The decisions, various decisions that stakeholders, senior management should be, that they take should be based on practical assessment, comprehensive assessment of resource and competence availability. And I've covered this same area as an interrelated concept in organizational design, as well as the ITIL frameworks, Agile, Lean. So more or less all of these frameworks you'll see as you progress through this course, they interrelate. So for instance, ADM may be used in conjunction with a set of deliverables with another framework, right? You could integrate ADM with other frameworks like ITIL, or maybe you want to integrate with Agile or Lean practices, right? And these have been deemed more appropriate for a specific organization. Another example that I'd like to provide is that many U.S. federal agencies have developed individual frameworks that define the deliverables specific to their particular departmental needs. What this implies is obviously you can customize it based on the given framework. Nevertheless, at least it's a great starting point. Next, let's take a look at the actual ADM cycle itself. You'll notice two illustrations, two diagrams on this slide. I'm going to start with the left side first. So within the left illustration, you'll notice within the middle, you'll have the requirement management and then encompassed by several phases. The core layers you'll notice are the business layer, application layer, and technology layer. 
And what they do, these layers simply support the description of the business information systems and technology architecture domains defined by the Tovia framework, as well as the interrelationship. Let's take a look at the strategy and motivation extension. So the strategy and motivation extension enables the modeling of stakeholders, drivers for change, business goals, principles, and other requirements of the enterprise. So the strategy and motivation elements within can be used to support the requirements management, whether they're preliminary, and the architecture vision phases of the Toga ADM. And the goal is to establish a high level business goal, architecture principles, and of course, the initial business requirements. They're also relevant to the change management phase of the Toga ADM, since the phase deals with change. If you notice, the implementation migration extension simply enables the modeling of portfolio project management gap analysis, and transition and migration planning. The TOGAF ADM lifecycle, as I mentioned, is iteration, right? So it's basically a three-level iteration. Cycling around the ADM is presented in a circular manner, indicating that the completion of one phase of the architecture works directly or feeds directly into the subsequent phases of the architecture work. Whereas the iteration between phases, the way TOGAF describes, this concept of iterating across phases, for example, if you want to think of returning to business architecture on completion of technology, right? And then the third of the third level is the cycling around a single phase itself. So TOGAP supports repeated execution of the activities within a single ADM phase as a technique for elaborating architectural content. The diagram or the illustration on the right side of the TOGAF area so during application of the ADM process, a number of outputs are produced based on obviously some inputs and steps according to the phase objective provided by the ADM itself. For example, you could have process flows, you could have product plans, you could have architectural requirements, and so on. Similarly, ADM input and output basically are number of input and output deliverables from each phase. And these are suggestions and need not to be followed exactly, but each deliverable produced should be vision or version rather to indicate when a change has occurred. Next, briefly just take a look at the TOGAF ADM phase and the objective of each phase. And it's important to understand what actually goes on in each of these phases. So starting from the top is the preliminary phase, which prepares the organization for a successful architecture project. Then we have the phase A or the architecture vision, which sets the scope, constraints, and the expectations for the project itself, but also validates the business context and creates the statement of architecture work. Then we have the business architecture, information systems architecture, technology architecture. So I'm gonna leave this slide so you can take a look at this. Let's kind of go through these. These are fairly self-explanatory. And a lot of this is sometimes memorization, guys. So you need to practice with these steps and then take a look at how to implement these. I'm gonna talk about the tool towards the end of this lecture where you can actually download this tool and then use these concepts and that in fact apply using that RQ4 tool. But I'm gonna leave this, we can go through it. If you have any questions, just feel free to reach out and ask on any particular phases. Next, let's take a look at the actual deliverables that the ADM cycle, in fact, provides. So starting from, the, of course, the preliminary, like I mentioned earlier, all of the phases and the objectives we've already discussed, the architecture vision, which is the high-level model of the candidate building block. So from the architecture vision, we have the data application architecture followed by the technology architecture. In step one, and these are the nine steps. This is going to walk you through quickly. Select the reference model, viewpoints, and tools, and then develop a baseline architecture description. In other words, just a high level. And then step three is develop the target architecture description. This is where you would detail out exactly what you need, such as develop view of required building blocks throughout the creation of catalog matrices and diagrams and the architecture document, and then fully document each building block. So this is basically covered within step three. 
And then step four is performing the gap analysis. Identify building blocks that are carried over, eliminated building blocks, any new or other gaps. Then determine the realization approach, for example, to be developed or to be procured. And then step five is defining the roadmap components. Step six is resolving impacts across the architectural landscape. Formal stakeholder review is step seven. Finalize the architecture is step eight. And then step nine is create the architecture definition document, which closes the loop itself. So just go through the actual deliverables, fairly straightforward. By the way, just so you know, TOGAF is something that you would need to spend a lot and a lot of time in actually working through this. So it'll come through a little bit of work, a little bit of practice, but it does require some efforts because it's not something just a one-time tool they can use and implement, right? It involves the entire organization from stakeholders to managers to other departments and so forth. And finally, which tool can I use? Well, the tool I'm going to recommend here is simply Archi4, which is, by the way, hosted at Open Group itself, which are the owners of Toga, right? So go ahead, go to this website called archimatetool.com. You can download this tool. So your assignment here is simply to go ahead and download the tool, and just dabble with it, play with it. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. This will give you a great starting point in not only understanding the concepts of the Toga ADM, but in fact using a tool and how it can be implemented. So I hope this helped. Practice with it. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. And with this, let's move to the next lesson.